Um, for those of us that are here, um, I'm planning on going through the four presentations uh, before we start doing Q&A. So I've
Good morning. Um, welcome to this uh, ADEX webinar uh, on the Coral Triangle. My name is Julian Hyde. I'll be the moderator of this session this morning. Uh, I'm the general manager of ReachJet Malaysia. Uh, we're involved in marine conservation around Southeast Asia, and we have several other people in the field joining us today. Today, if you didn't know, is Coral Triangle Day, which was first celebrated in 2012, and it aims to celebrate and raise awareness about the Coral Triangle, which is considered to be the global epicenter of marine biodiversity. Um, what exactly do we mean by the Coral Triangle? Let me just give you some basic figures. There are six countries in the Coral Triangle, Philippines in the north, Malaysia in the west, Indonesia in the south and east, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. Combined population of about 400 million people. It has more than 30% of the world's reefs, which when you consider how small that area is in global terms, is, is a lot. Uh, the Coral Triangle is home to 76% of the world's coral species and 30% of all coral reef fish, fishes. It's home to six of seven of the world's turtle species. In addition, it's important economically. Uh, estimates are that fisheries exports generate US, uh, three, three billion US dollars a year. Uh, and coastal tourism is also worth about 3 billion US a year. Obviously, there's more to it than these simple figures reveal. So we have a group of experts this morning who have many years of experience working in the region to tell us more about it, tell us why it's important, and what challenges they are facing in conserving this important resource. This morning, we are joined by, um, please forgive me for any errors in pronouncing their names, Hesti Widodo from the Coral Triangle Center in Indonesia. Dr. Norasma Dacho from Department of Fisheries Sabah will hopefully be joining us a little later on. She's obviously having problems with connections. Monique Sumampao from WWF, WWF Malaysia. And Mr. Klaas Jan Toiler from WWF in Indonesia. I'll do a little bit more introduction later on. Um, it's not about me. I want to get to the speakers as soon as possible. So um, just before we do get started, some brief house rules, just in case we do start to get a lot of people joining. I'm going to keep my remarks very brief. I'll just give each participant a one-line introduction. So please don't think I'm being rude. We can find out more about them if we need to. Secondly, I will ask our experts to speak on their subject for five minutes. Uh, I hope we can try and stick to five minutes more or less. And finally, I'd like to say questions until the end of the presentations. Please put your questions in the chat function. We will pick those questions up and ask the specialists about them a little later on once we get around to it. So without further ado, the first speaker is Hesti Widodo. Hesti is a senior program manager at the Coral Triangle Center based in Bali. Her work now focuses on capacity development in the field of marine and coastal management. So she's training marine park managers, community members, and so on, on how marine parks actually work. Here she is, she's gonna to talk to us about the Coral Triangle, what it is, and the work that she's involved in conserving the area's marine resources. Hesti, over to you. Thank you. Let me share my screen first. Hope it's going so right. Okay, so let's start. Um, I'm Hesti Widodo from Coral Triangle Center. I'm going to talk about an enhancing capacity for marine conservation in the Coral Triangle. Um, as you've seen in a video previously for three minutes video, it tells about what is Coral Triangle. And this is actually the bull's eyes, we call it the bull's eyes of marine biodiversity in the world, in which if you look at the map here, the dark red is actually showing the highest marine biodiversity compilation of the coral reefs uh, species, which is more than 500 species found here and more than 3000 uh, fish species, but also mangrove and seagrass are found here. And this is the Amazon of the sea. And for the last more than a decade now, uh, the six countries has been working together for conserving this area, sustaining uh, the, the coastal resources for coral reef fish food security. And actually the area uh, is the home for uh, more than 3000 species 
And if you find if you try to find coral reefs in the world, 76 are here, 75, 76 percent are found here, and it's generate 1.6 billion income for local community. But the area actually founds uh, common threat common threats from unsustainable fishing, like bomb cyanide fishing, still occurring. Irresponsible tourism is has still happening, and also now we've been hearing a lot about marine debris and plastic pollutions. Um, let me introduce about Coral Triangle Center. We started in 2010. Our, in, we, our vision is actually for healthy seas that enrich people and nature. Uh, CTC uh, mission is actually inspires and trains generation to care for coastal marine ecosystem and we believe excellence, local steward, stewardship, collaboration and result. And we are um, official development partner of Coral Triangle Initiative Coral Reef Fish Food Security since 2014. And this is our theory of change or how we go through um, the process to make generation inspired to care for coastal marine ecosystem, healthy seas that enrich people and nature. Um, we believe the Center for Marine Conservation actually the home for our, our work to support the raising awareness, to build the capacity, and also to, um, to work on our living lab for MPM learning site and learning network. And looking at the case study in Indonesia, we are targeting 32.5 million hectares MPA by 2030, which is, it is expected reaching the 10% of marine areas as uh, agreed in IHE target for a convention by the first target. But actually what happened in Indonesia until now, we are still experience um, challenge in terms of managing this uh, marine protected area. If you see the map, there are some red dots still in some of our MPAs, what does it mean? This um, MPAs are still not yet managed uh, managed properly, and this is also the question of how effective we are in uh, achieving our target in conserving mar marine biodiversity in Indonesia. And also, it has been identified there are gaps in terms of achieving our target in sustaining marine resources in the Coral Triangle, but also in Indonesia which is the gap in capacity. And um, at national level in Indonesia currently, together with other NGO partners, including WWF Indonesia, we work together with the government to uh, help lo align long-term strategy and priorities for um, collaborative effort, including the Ministry of Marine Affairs, Planning Bureau, Finance Department, Maritime Affairs, and also um, um, our related partners, and also university to look at the potential how we build, uh, how we make our governance work, how we include other frameworks to work together to make sure the participation and how to um, make an integrated planning because the seas is not only there, we need to work also with the community working on the ground and also there's planning, uh, land planning that we need to get uh, into our consideration. And also we want to, uh, also raise awareness about sustainable uh, tourism, but also ensuring the sustainable financing existing on the ground. And at the national system for building the capacity, we work together with Ministry of Marine Affairs for building the roadmap, establishing a roadmap for MPA personnel capacity, and also making a professional competency certification system to ensure that those who are working on MPA they have the capacity how to do it and they know the, the function that they will uh, play in a role and, and make sure that they, they are taking care of their marine protected area. And this is the way how we conducted the work um, in, um, in our work. Actually, in, since 2011, CTC have been trained 5,050 participants. This is not only the, the MPA personnel, but also those stakeholders working in MPA, in establishing MPA from the beginning or when we start initiating the MPA. There are 26 training modules that we, we develop, but also we capture all the information, the database of this training for um, the, the sake of monitoring evaluation and catch up later with the alumni for uh, continuous support. No? Sorry. 
And then uh, you look at the map here where we are working in, in Indonesia and also uh, in, in Timor-Leste. Um, the closest one is Nusa Penida MPA. Uh, and we also, in, this is in the Lesser Sunda and also a two in Timor-Leste, which is Likisa and uh, Atauro Island. And in the Banda Siscape, we work in Banda Island, MPA Network, uh, Buano and Lease MPA in Maluku province. And another one is actually North Maluku, which is Sula MPA, which is a sanctuary for turtle. Um, in these two location, we call it a living lab of the work of MPA. We call it MPA field learning sites. This is Nusa Penida, if you know Mola Mola, maybe some of you have heard of, this is the location that you can always find Mola Mola, uh, Mola fish, Mola Ramsey, and also Banda Island and Marine, Marine Protected Area Network. We've been working there since 2012, and uh, we work with the community for reviving SASI, the traditional uh, management system. And this is the new, uh, six MPAs that we, we are working on. We are still uh, supporting the establishment of the MPA management, not yet there, but we are um, positive that soon we will get this uh, area announced and initiated and uh, officiated. Um, also, we work in the learning network um, for the couple of years we have been working for supporting uh, CTI CFF Women Leaders Forum, and we we've been through three uh, stages of the supporting the Women Leaders Forum, building uh, bringing all the women practitioners working in conservation and inspiring others to really voicing out their uh, message about conservation, and also in terms of building the local government network. This is a network that now quite independent. Uh, they established their own organization now, uh, which is what one of the one of the thing that success factor that we have to consider. And also, we work with private sector and sustainable marine tourism, uh, inspiring the the work, how we work together with the dive operators, how inspiring them, and making together uh, agreed on code of conduct in doing the marine uh, sustainable marine tourism. And this is one of the initiatives that we've been uh, working for the last uh, one year to almost two years now with Greenfin Initiative, which aims to protect and conserve coral reefs through environmentally friendly guidelines that promote uh, sustainable diving and snorkeling industries. This is voluntary system and is supported by um, United Nations Environment Program. And um, we also we have Center of Marine Conservation and we, this is a center for us to build uh, raising awareness, uh, bringing a campaign that goes for local to global one. And um, in terms of, we've heard a lot of marine debris and plastic pollution. This is some of the fact that we found out that Indonesia is actually one of the big contributor for the plastic waste in the sea. And some of the, uh, the plastic waste in the ocean is actually for discard, from the discarded and lost fishing nets and plastic debris. And what we're doing here with the Center for Marine Conservation, actually, we work uh, for youth outreach program, uh, inspiring them from the, the young, from the young age to really working together how to support their marine environment through education also. And also we work with the community um, in Eastern part of Indonesia to recycle ghost net. And um, we also hear in, because we are in Bali, Indonesia, we're very strong in terms of culture and we combine art and science with the Wayang performance having me, bringing message. And also we have the coral, uh, coral universe installation, which is the coral reefs um, actually in the wall. If you see the Sylvia Earl actually come visit us and it was like a uh, wow moment also for us. And we combine also with the Ogo Ogo, um, if you look at that, um, the Baruna Murti is the god of the sea that actually protect, um, and he's showing the anger because of the plastic coming to the sea. And um, also we have game Hesti, for change. Let, let, yeah. let me let me stop you there for a second because uh, yeah. we we need to we need to move on. Um, yeah. Is there anything particularly you want to say, or should we move on to Monique and we'll we'll carry on during this this discussion later? Anything particularly yeah. you want to fin finish off with, or can we move on? I think this is only the last uh, one that cool. the game of change, how to raise awareness, including having the escape room of plastic dangers and uh, SOS from the deep. This okay. is a thing that um, the new uh, approach that we use for inspiring others to, work, to, uh, 
to take care of their oceans. That looks scary. You can try. <laughs> no, I think I'll, I'll let the younger ones, I think I'll leave that one to the younger generation. Okay, thank you, Hesti, for outlining the work. It's a big area. Obviously, there's an awful lot of work to do. Um, I'm going to invite uh, Monique from WWF to speak next. Monique is the head of WWF Malaysia's marine programs. She's a specialist in marine conservation, and marine spatial planning. She's been very much involved with marine conservation and marine parks in Sabah. Uh, Monique, tell us a bit about your work. Thank you, Julian. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are all health, as healthy as our coral, as colorful as our coral, hopefully. And uh, yes, I will start with the resources use, opportunity, threat, and challenges that we are all uh, facing in all our day anyway. Uh, but we also have some challenges and also threat in the quite similar area that we are facing on uh, fisheries, on the settlement, coastal area, marine tourism, and also the Sorry in Bahasa. So this kid are from the there. It's very so it's also an issue in here. But I will just give uh, one example about our work that what works as Julian mentioned if we better discuss on what works and what doesn't work in here I will leave what doesn't work in the discussion but what what works that I'm going to uh, strengthen in here for example I will give one example only because five minutes is not enough to tell everything so fish bombing I'm going to use a fish bombing case in Semporna so we have a, a seismic detection in Semporna that we install in some of the area. And here are the graph that we uh, collecting the data from 2018 until 2019. So as you can see from 2018, the yellow one bar and the orange bar, it's significantly decreased based on our detection data that we also uh, work together with the Ocean Defender in Hong Kong. So uh, this is a one of a good example that I think they they know us. They they know probably what we are uh, doing there. So uh, at and in returns they are also afraid to be around that area. That this is also our area of uh, locally marine managed area in Samporna. But apart from those uh, fish bombing and other poverty and all the. Uh, threat that we are facing in the area in Malaysia as well as in the Coral Triangle country, I believe, we also will suffer from the climate change impact, especially from, for the coral uh, bleaching. Uh, in the 15 years, Sabah East area, uh, including Tun Mustafa Park, as well as Semporna, will facing experience severe bleaching in here. And, and, and this is also not to mention that Samporna and Tawau area in the sea part box area that you see, that will also that is also one of the highest sea level rise in Malaysia, according to the data. So what works in here, uh, as I may say, so the left bottom there is a detection, fish bombing detection uh, unit that we install in uh, at least 10 areas in Samporna and also soon will be some areas also in TMP. Uh, uh, that is the map that where we can detect the fish bombing area and also the innovation of uh, how we collect the data for poaching, nesting, and uh, turtle. So we use the handphone for recording for everyone or at least the uh, warden to go on the ground and take their handphone and with this application submit it directly because at the past we are using manually with papers with pen and, and that will be gone by a uh, wave or by a uh, boat or rains and but with this handphone everyone has handphone so everyone can report it very fast 
and and also definitely awareness and education always uh, because that from there that we we can speak and communicate with the people that doesn't understand that coral is a live animal not a stone assessment so study and data availability is always better for decision making for transparency and also better monitoring for strengthen uh, law enforcement other things we also doing partnership definitely uh, partnership is one of the key area that uh, is very necessary especially in working with the uh, government state government federal government on planning as well policy management and also how to ensure our uh, management mpa is effective there also community not to forget that the community i have uh, one slide for an example on how our work with the community in TMP. So through the fisheries improvement program to the alternative livelihood program, we can show all of this, you can read on my slide, but basically uh, monthly income and cost reduction on 2019, we can see already that the increase of 100,000 uh, percent, uh, sorry, 150 percent increase monthly income from the targeted community and also 75 percent reduction for their uh, fuel and a lot of example also in these pictures that uh, uh, we work with the community in the MP like in Bangi, Berungus, Tigabu, etc. Interestingly about COVID, right? And we all know that during the movement control order in Malaysia, we are not allowed to go out and we are not also allowed to go to the sea. So we are doing this uh, assessment, initial assessment by phone, by communicate with them, Zoom call like this, etc. And we also make a video that is also probably you can uh, see this link. You can find it in the video in the Netherlands as our donors, how we work with our rangers on the ground uh, still monitoring it, even though with the uh, very profession SOP during the COVID. So I'm going to say in here that definitely the initiation and assessment during COVID is important. For example, we know that the it will or it already significant decline of fish price along the food supply chains. One of the example that they are saying from the fishermen say that the fish the the fish cats are sold for like 50 to 70 percent lower than the price before the MCO. And also, for example, the Balambangan, like uh, we know the Tengiri. Tengiri is 10 ringgit per kilo, and now it's only like 3 ringgit per kilo. So that's why, according to the Fisherman Action Network, they said that because of this disrupt, disruption of food supply chain, they're better to say that the fisherman is not going out fishing because the cost is really higher than the selling of the uh, fish price itself. And uh, from Sampurna, we heard our colleague dive operator says that more bombs in Sampurna. That is something that we need to address because this is a normal uh, baseline. We need to have a baseline like this for further approach. I think that's all. Julian, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Monique. Uh, that's great. Um, I'm going to go straight to Klaus, except first I'll just say I find it interesting that the supply of fish is going down post-COVID or because of COVID, but also the price is going down. Normally, supply and demand, when supply goes down, price will go up. But you're suggesting people are not going fishing, so supply is going down, but the price is going up. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we're done. Uh, for now, uh, the third speaker we have uh, is uh, Klaus Jan Teuler. Sorry again if I got your name wrong, Klaus. Class is the leader of the WWF Coral Triangle Program. He's based in Jakarta. He's going to talk about his work and perhaps a little bit about the wider needs of the Coral Triangle because we've focused on Indonesia a little bit. There are other parts involved as well. Class, over to you. Thank you, uh, Julian, and uh, good morning to all. Uh, glad to be on this uh, early morning call, celebration call for the Coral Triangle uh, Initiative um on coast um, coral reefs, food security and fisheries so uh, i'd like to um, 
present a couple of slides that is more related to the international uh, collaboration. That is um, that is what we actually are celebrating uh, today, and also uh, reminding us of uh, why is it so uh, so important to to work together in the region to protect water rights. So as you can see, and Julian hinted at that, uh, there are six governments involved, uh, six uh, countries involved in the coral triangle. Uh, parts of the coral triangle within their uh, territorial uh, water, uh, and this this light blue center, what you what you see is is sort of where all the biodiversity uh, of the coral triangle um, uh, comes together and explodes in in these high numbers that have been presented, um, both coral reefs, mangroves, fish, um, so uh, you name it. This is the bio biodiversity, marine biodiversity hotspot of the world. So about uh, 12, 14 years ago, um, governments and, and, and NGOs worked together on, on how can we um, uh, look at this area and, and see it as a common, common asset that needs to be uh, looked after. Um, a lot of the problems that uh, the region uh, was facing at that time uh, was a lot of illegal fishing. Um, uh, especially on, on the live reef fish trade um, that feed it the mainland of, of Asia for a large part. Um, upcoming tourism uh, put a huge pressure on, on some of the areas what we, what we see in the region and also as mentioned by, by Hesti, the, the, the marine waste, the plastic, which is of course not bound by any country, it just flows with the, with the, with the currents. So this area for many reasons uh, need to be looked at uh, beyond the national boundaries. Um, the six countries recognize that uh, and through the leadership of the, of the six countries um, um, they came together around an initiative which is very unique actually, a conservation initiative uh, uh, on, up for, on, on this scale and for this purpose. But as you can see, um, besides, the, um, besides the, 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 the scientific boundary, the light blue uh, part of this map, uh, there is of course a huge, uh, this area is, is, is of a huge importance for, for a much larger part of the world. And I'm not even counting on the markets that, uh, that are out there in the EU and the US uh, who like to consume fish from this part of the world or who like to bring tourists to this part of the world. But you see this direct um, uh, influence from, 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 from uh, countries like China, Vietnam, Thailand, Singapore, uh, Australia. Uh, they all have a, a, a relation with this area. And, um, and um, a, a good example is the booming tourism. Uh, we see a real shift in tourism where, where uh, mass tourism is, is much more coming from the region itself. Uh, into the coral triangle and 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 going to places that are very vulnerable and and sensitive to uh, to uh, to exploitation. So this is an, a map that reminds us all that uh, conservation doesn't stop at boundaries. While uh, a lot of conservation work needs to be done on the uh, on the ground, uh, as shown by our previous speakers. But at the same time, we need to look at this area as a whole and, and see how can we, um, can we avoid uh, these threats that are currently uh, happening, uh, affecting this place. So with that um, um, sort of introduction to the Coral Triangle, the, the, the governments, as I said, they came together in, in 2009 in Manado, Indonesia. Um, uh, please visit the place, it's beautiful. It's on the northern tip of uh, Sulawesi Island. Uh, they came together in, in uh, 2009 signing a declaration, um, a heads of state, uh, meaning it has the highest uh, buy-in and commitment from the governments to, uh, to, to come together around this initiative uh, and, 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 and put a focus on conservation and sustainable managing of marine and coastal resources, which is of course a very important and at that time a very uh, forward-looking um, uh, thing to do. So the building that you see is uh, the permanent secretariat that was opened, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about six years ago, five, six years ago. So this secretariat is, a, is a, uh, an, another commitment that the, the governments uh, show to the world that uh, this is not just a paper uh, declaration, this is not just a paper uh, 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 initiative. 
it is backed up by a um, by an, uh, a structure and a government structure that is uh, that is uh, supported by all six gov governments, uh, and that tries to coordinate um, uh, the work that is happening across the region uh, with uh, multiple amount of partners. And I show that in the next slide. So this initiative. Besides the governments um, uh, uh, le uh, leading the, the initiative and sort of providing the, the umbrella for all the work that uh, that uh, is happening uh, in the Coral Triangle, as presented by our previous uh, speakers, um, for WWF as a conservation organization operating in many of the countries that uh, that have a, a link with the. We see this as incredibly important. There's, of course, a lot of uh, issues that need to be tackled uh, globally or regionally. Uh, and we uh, uh, think and, and believe that the Coral Triangle Initiative, the government-led initiative, is a perfect uh, vehicle and platform to, 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 to work on issues that uh, yeah, go sometimes beyond uh, countries' um, uh, um, uh, not saying capacities, but so com uh, com uh, countries' mandates itself. Uh, as you look at uh, uh, dealing with illegal fishing, if you look at uh, waste, uh, climate change impacts, and now very importantly, as, as uh, indicated by, uh, by uh, Monique, um, the, the, how is the re re uh, uh, region going to respond on uh, post-COVID? What does it mean for food security? How can we ensure that uh, coastal communities uh, in the region are provided with uh, with uh, their resources? How they are resilient against these shocks that are happened uh, because of a, a pandemic as we're currently experiencing? Uh, but also, how can we, uh, uh, at a regional level, um, uh, provide solutions and 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 learn from each other on on on, on dealing with uh, marine waste? Uh, there's uh, so many communities out there uh, on small islands that depend on tourism uh, and maybe in the future much more domestic tourism because the international travel is severely uh, restricted. Uh, but how do these communities, uh, how, do, how can they manage their waste, how can they manage their, uh, their uh, plastic problems uh, so that their tourism, which is, an, uh, which is uh, their income generator, is not going to be effective. So we see this, um, this, this collaboration, both from governments as development partners and, 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 and uh, a wide variety of collaborators, which includes many uh, universities, many stakeholders in, 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 in Malaysia, Indonesia, in, in the region, uh, as, an, as a great platform uh, to, to start to trying to address these, uh, these uh, challenges and these threats that, uh, that, uh, that the region is experiencing. So I leave it at that, uh, Julian. Uh, oh, sorry, one more. Um, so, so what is it then that that sort of provides a reference to to all this work? Um, currently, the uh, the regional secretariat, the CTI CFF, is developing a, a regional plan of action. Uh, this is the second uh, regional plan of action. Um, uh, and we, uh, as partners, as uh, shown before in the slide, are, are working with the Secretariat to make this, uh, the, this, this, this plan of action as uh, uh, relevant and as um, uh, solution-oriented as possible. Um, a, a large function or a very important function of the Secretariat is that uh, countries can learn from each other, work with each other. Um, so there's a lot of focus on the regional exchanges, how to manage marine protected areas, how to work with coastal communities, uh, how to ensure uh, food security. So we, um, we see this as a very important function uh, to, uh, to not only uh, set great targets, but also facilitate uh, collaborations uh, in this in very large region with, uh, with so many different uh, aspects uh, that, uh, that, uh, that can be of influence for, for each other. So I leave it at that, Julian. Uh, any questions, happy to take. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Klaas. One, of, one thing you just said about how varied the region is uh, struck me yesterday when I was thinking about this. This we moved from, you know, the de very very developed island of Singapore, the Kuala developed Malaysia, through to areas of east eastern the eastern part of the area where, you know, levels of development are much are much lower. Um, there's a couple of things that people have talked about just there, uh, which kind of interesting. Um, sustainable tourism class. I was interested. You said that 
mass tourism has been the trend, but um, everything that we're hearing now suggests that the era of mass tourism is not at an end. Uh, there is no long, there is not going to be a return of the numbers, the volumes we've seen, at least not for a very long time. Um, simply because people are scared to travel, they're scared to get, gather in big groups. We're being, we're being told by our tourism specialists that we can expect a new sort of tourism, which is very niche, it's very small scale. Uh, people are looking for a real authentic experience. Uh, so the mass tourism destinations are, you know, are going to have some problems. But so are the rest of us, because the numbers that we used to rely on for funding are not going to be there anymore. So, you know, a lot of marine conservation funding is funded from tourism user fees uh, or, or variants thereof. And that's not going to be around. Um, Hesti, I wanted to come back to you because you're talking about capacity development along, amongst local people. How is this change in tourism going to affect the groups that you're working with? Um. Um, our work on the ground is actually uh, working. We also uh, try to now have local champions working on the ground. And we try to also introduce this uh, basic marine tourism. And also we provide also training for our key stakeholders on in our MPA uh, field learning sites to make sure that they also understand the concept and how to implement that. We are still working on that. So I think it's only like, like not only solely investing on community, we also work with the dive operators. For example, like in the Sapnida, we, um, because the area is quite, uh, it's quite intensive uh, tourism activities now because people are uh, maybe a little bit boring with Bali and they go, uh, they surf to the Sapnida now. Um, and we have like more uh, like, 3,000 visitors coming to Nusapanida with the, and knowing this is the marine protected area. And that's why we also work with the local communities to train them and to, to not only train, but also engage them in patrolling and tourism activities. We build code of conduct together with the communities, but also I think dive operators at the private sectors play a very important role. They are the one, uh, some of the dive operators actually we're working on is uh, in the Salembohan are, um, are actually established by local communities. So it's a great chance to also introduce that kind of voluntary work related to marine tourism activities. Um, not only the, the basic the principles of sustainable marine tourism that we introduce to the communities, but also how uh, for them, how to actually monitor the change and uh, participate them into the uh, joint patrol uh, surveillance activities with the local communities. Okay. With the local communities are a thing that we're very interested in. Uh, uh, my opinion is that in Malaysia, we could do more to include local communities in, in marine conservation. Uh, Monique, I'll put you on the spot. Do you agree or not? Yes, I s agree. And also, I think I, I can support the uh, state, Sabah state government on their uh, statement earlier about this is the time to uh, fix all the infrastructure on tourism where uh, when it's the tourism come back they will be ready but the thing is how they need to uh, uh, fix that infrastructure is with the sustainable way with the sustainably uh, looking on the area of the habitat of coastal area like for example not building in a jetty in the area of uh, seagrass or the coral reef because before that happens so uh, that is the area where we can also work together with the government does uh, crikey, yeah, but in remote areas where tourism is growing uh, without a lot of control and management, uh, it's kind of difficult to make those ideas stick because it's convenient. It's it's what's convenient in the local area. One of the islands we work in has seen an increase of to to three thousand visitors a day. Tiny island, three thousand people a day, completely unsustainable. But there's not a lot of you don't see a lot of influence to manage that tourism very well. Klaus, you mentioned the, the new plan of action. How much of that is going to talk about tourism and, and how much is going to look at these issues of a changing tourism where numbers are reducing, incomes are reducing, personal incomes are reducing. What, what, does the plan of action cover that much or is it kind of too early for it? Uh, well, it is, it is a good question because the, the, as many of our plans uh, were designed uh, or are in, in process of designing, uh, with a post-COVID world uh, as, as the reality, and, and now that has to change. And 
So what I think uh, will happen is that uh, many of our, our strategies and also of our partners will sort of take into account uh, uh, the, 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 the resilience of coastal communities. Um, uh, tourism is of course one, one important element when it is building uh, local economies. But at the same time, food security. So how can we ensure uh, 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 the, the food, uh, there's, uh, there is uh, food on the table, fish on the table for, 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 the, for, the, for the coastal communities? How can uh, we ensure um, uh, coastal communities are part of management, as you mentioned, uh, uh, critically important to include. Uh, and, and some countries can, and that's what, hence, again, this, this learning from each other, uh, the, the, the influence of coastal communities in management of areas in the Pacific, for example, could, is a great example on how uh, uh, that can be, uh, can be uh, learned from in, in other parts of the Coral Triangle. But yeah, I think the WF itself is 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 also uh, was also caught uh, by 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 this uh, pandemic, and we were really looking at uh, a couple of months ago and how to be part of uh, how to influence the mass tourism going to these very vulnerable places. But now with this changing world and with 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 um, an, an unsure. Uh, 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 tourism development uh, ahead of us that might uh, much more focus on domestic tourism and, and trying to keep the tourists in the countries and, and, and bring them to the, to the places. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, awareness raising, uh, working with communities on, on, on providing uh, best practices uh, and, uh, and, 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 and therefore uh, creating hopefully a much more sustainable uh, and less, uh, less impactful uh, type of uh, type I'd like to see people involved in monitoring as well. I mean, our reefs have been closed now since effectively before monsoon, so October, November last year. So it's not just the last three months. They've been closed now for six, seven, eight months. What are we seeing as changes? People are saying there's more fish. What else is happening? And, and how much does that tell us about the value of closing sites to keep tourists away completely? We've got three minutes left. Hesti, give us your last thoughts on where all of this needs to go. What can we do better? What should be the focus be? For the next five to ten years very quickly i feel like a radio I, host um a, a video okay i think we still we need to um to make solution actions we need to invest in people who can make informed decision set policy influence behavior transform business generate revenue and for innovate technology in all sectors and also we do need to document cost benefit analysis and present policy uh, present this into our policy and decision maker. We need to work with private sector on zero waste packaging whenever, whenever possible, but also create campaign and connect with global coalition because we, we need to work together to make it to make this action really happening on the ground and make impact. We didn't even talk about plastic yet and we've only got two minutes left. So I'm gonna throw <laughs> that at you, Monique, in the scale of things. Fish bombing, overfishing, tourism development, where does plastic fit? Is it that big a problem considering everything else or what? Ooh, unfair, I know, but there you go. I, I'm on mute. Yes, uh, definitely. That is not a small uh, problem. Definitely that is a quite serious and significant problem to the area and the community and habitat as well as to the community itself. Because microplastic, you don't, you cannot see, but it, it's around in our water drinking, right? So definitely an action should be taken for that as well. Uh, again, as a baseline on how to give it to the community about that. Uh, one more thing that I'm going to say about this, uh, if, if we stop our activity, normal activity for at least only two weeks, this is what happened when during our uh, post-COVID MCO control order or lockdown or whatever you call it, the resources is slowly coming back. Uh, you can ask them, they, they say that the fees are out there a lot, right? But they cannot sell it. And also the thing is why they are still using the bomb. That is our question. That is our uh, uh, more challenge about this after this, right? Is it about because of the laziness? Is that because of, because the fish is out there coming back and there are a lot of fish there. You don't need to use the cyanide and fishing, fish bombing anymore. So I guess that is my point and our challenge together to work together. Thank you, Julian. So it sounds as though fish bombing is more important than plastic to money. Yes. Uh, class, no, no, a final no, no, word no, no, in 30 seconds important. and then we're done. Similarly. 
Okay. Thanks, Julian. Uh, yeah, so I think the challenge for the next uh, 10 years is very much uh, in line uh, with what Hesti is saying is, is how can we work with uh, huge numbers of communities uh, across the Coral Triangle in managing uh, coastal marine resources. Uh, there are, uh, we are setting ourselves up as, as organizations and as governments with uh, very ambitious targets for 2030. We need to answer uh, the situation post-COVID, how the world will look like. Uh, but to me, it comes down to including uh, uh, many uh, coastal communities uh, in, 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 in managing resources to create this resilience at the local level. And that will be a huge effort for which we need this partnership. Uh, and, and hopefully we can help deliver that under the Coral Triangle Initiative. Over. OK, class, thank you very much for those final words. Uh, my clock says it's 8.50. You need to go and get in the car. Uh, I have a day to get on with, and I'm sure Hesti and Monique do. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you to the organizers for this chance. Hopefully, there'll be lots more to talk about. Um, we can make our contacts, address, uh, contacts available if necessary. But for now, I'm going to click the Leave Meeting box. I wish you all a very good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.